Windows just recently released their anniversary update and they actually gave developers access to a whole new suite of tools. And so basically what they've done, and this is still in beta, but Windows 10 now has an entire subsystem for Linux. It was based on Microsoft's old Project Astoria. And now you basically have access to a full Ubuntu based bash shell that runs atop the subsystem. So what does this mean? Well, basically it means that upon installing or I guess enabling, you can issue bash commands via the command prompt on Windows. So there's a few steps to get this set up. So the first is to make sure you have the latest version of Windows 10. They just recently released this, uh, looks like August 2nd, or actually September 20th. So I don't know when they actually added the Linux kernel to Windows 10, but this isn't very old at all. So first step, make sure you have the latest version of Windows 10. Next, we're gonna actually go into the search bar and we're gonna type system. And this is gonna open up the system control panel. That is not what we wanted. It's actually settings. Go ahead and it's the trusted Windows store app, I guess. So we're gonna to go to update and security. And then we're gonna to go to four developers and we wanna enable developer mode. And then it's gonna just warn you that you can hurt your system if you download unsecured Things from the internet, go ahead and hit yes. Close out of this, we don't need that anymore. And then we're gonna to go to the control panel. And we're gonna to go to programs and files. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There we go, programs and features, I'm sorry. And then we're gonna to go to turn Windows features on or off. And then if you scroll down, you should see Windows subsystem for Linux. So we want to enable this. We're going to hit OK. And then it's going to apply changes. And we're actually going to need to restart our computer to be able to access Bash. So I'm going to go ahead and pause this video, restart my system, and I'll be right back. All right, so after your computer is restarted, we are going to go down into the search bar and we're gonna type in bash. And this is going to execute a command automatically in the command prompt. And all we have to do is type Y to get started with the installation. So let me increase the size of the font. This is kind of small. Okay. All right, so as you can see, this is in beta, so it's not gonna be perfect, but it should do well for our purposes. So I'm gonna hit Y. And then this could go ahead and download from the Windows Store. And I'm going to pause this video and resume it because I have no idea how long this is going to take. All right, so it's finished. It extracted the file system. And now it's prompting us to enter in our Unix name or username. And this does not have to match the name of our PC. So this can be whatever you want it to be. So I'm just going to do Joe. Next, we'll enter in our password. Retype it. So it should be ready to go. So let me go ahead and close out of that window. And how you will access this is through the start menu, we're gonna click the bash Ubuntu on Windows. So let's try running our first command. And if you wanna increase the size of the font or change the font, you just right click and go to properties, font. So let's try doing an apt get update. I'm going to try doing it without sudo because I thought I read somewhere that you don't actually need super user level. It just assumes that you have it, at least on Windows. So let's see if this works without sudo. And it doesn't. So I'm going to type sudo app-get update. And yeah, so it's updating the Ubuntu files. Awesome. So let's go ahead and start up a Python shell and see how the interpreter works. So type in Python three, enter, and then let's try one plus one and see what it shows us. Two, so that's a good start. Let's try print hello world. Awesome. So that's how to enable bash on Windows 10. Like I said before, this feature's in beta and this is not a replacement for a complete installation of Linux. So any interactions with Windows, it's hard to tell 
because I haven't spent much time using this, but this should work very well for our purposes and it should make it really easy to follow along with the following tutorials.